Welcome back to The Blame Game for week six of the Spring Split Season 7. There was an international tournament last week, so we were off because it featured no North American teams, so we were luckily able to keep living in our bubble. That doesn't mean nothing happened though, because we saw some roster shuffle out of Team Liquid, and that's actually where we're gonna start. Team Liquid went one and one on the week, even though shockingly they put a mid laner at 80 carry and an 80 carry at mid lane. That doesn't mean everything was all gravy for the team though, as there was still a lot of hate thrown Youngbin's way for his performance in the AD carry role. All right, this one's fairly obvious, and I don't particularly feel like ragging on Youngbin too much, so let's just get this one out of the way. Yes, Youngbin was the biggest factor in most of the games that Team Liquid lost this weekend. He's not an LCS AD carry. And that's not shade, that's just a fact. He was a pretty good challenger and collegiate mid laner, now playing 80 carry in the LCS after one week of practice on a team that's struggling. I think there were definitely some plays that someone in this situation should not be making, but I doubt he was comfortable on stage or thinking clearly. So yeah, Youngbin sucked, but TL honestly probably shouldn't have even put him out there. Who knows how or why they reached the decision, they probably ran out of time while looking to acquire other options, and Youngbin stepped in. Honestly, I think Youngbin deserves praise for having the balls to actually go out there and play. He probably knew he wasn't going to do well and was still willing to go out there and potentially look like an idiot in front of hundreds of thousands of people. Most of us are too scared to look bad in public at anything. TL probably would have been better off using their challenger AD carry, former CLG sub social media guy, so if he failed, he could at least meme himself when it happened. There has got to be a better option. Our other topic this week comes from the El Clasico matchup between CLG and TSM. CLG lost the series pretty hard overall despite having some decent early games. A lot of the blame coming down on the draft and in particular leaving up the Syndra. Starting with game one, the big problem with CLG's draft is that it's an all physical damage team comp going up against TSM. Now there's a bunch of situations right now where all physical damage comps are actually fine but this is not one of them. Both teams essentially have a front to back team fighting team comp and the all AD versus double tanks and a karma makes it basically impossible for CLG to melt the front line first. It's no surprise to see late game team situations like this one where TSM can essentially charge headlong into CLG unpunished. Coming into game two and based off game one, I can understand why CLG did not think Syndra needed a ban. Bjergsen played well, but wasn't really dominating, especially not in the early game which is often the scariest point to play against the Syndra. That doesn't mean I like the draft in game 2 out of CLG, however. The first round of the draft was more or less fine, and the big issue started coming in the second ban phase. It seems like CLG is trying to bait a certain matchup in the top lane with the double tank ban, but failed to do so. I'm not sure if they wanted TSM to take a top first so they could counterpick, or perhaps they hoped TSM would take Jace mid, a bit of a Bjergsen favorite, and then could force a heavy physical damage team with no magic damage tanks, or get Haunter to take Rumble and then have the Renekton already counterpicked. Instead, TSM takes Syndra again, and CLG rounds their comp out with a bunch of picks that are hard to play into Poppy as her W negates most of their engages. TSM, of course, takes the only good tank left up in Poppy and end the game with a good team comp. CLG made a nice play early against the Poppy with the pressure that Renekton was able to generate in the 1v1, but they likely would have still had a hard time closing this game out. They made sure that they didn't even need to find that out though as they lost a ton of skirmishes super hard in the early game. It's true that CLG's play was not good this series, but the draft was equally bad or worse, and even Tony agreed. The blame is definitely deserved this time. This week's High Five Comment of the Week award is brought to you by my patrons Samir Chopra, Alan Beck, and Matt Bowen, and goes to Rarhawk. Now, a lot of people were cracking this joke, and it's pretty funny overall, though maybe not the most original. Speaking of not original, what is with Savako's comment getting this many upvotes? I know I've given this guy a high five before, so I don't feel bad about bringing this up, and it's more of a don't hate the player, hate the game type situation, but how is high risk, high reward still funny? I think I saw this shit like season four, three years ago. That's gonna do it for this week's episode. It's a little shorter than normal because I'm doing the Challenger Series playoffs tonight and Thursday, so be sure to tune in to see who might be pushing into the NALCS, and more importantly for more me. Until next time, guys. I've been trying to be more active on Instagram recently, but I don't really post about league-related stuff, so it might not be your cup of tea, but check it out.